One of our viewers hit us up about uh, me doing time or running across, you know, doing time with white collar guys. Guys who committed, let's say, uh, embezzlement, um, stock fraud, uh, you know, corporate fraud, whatever the case may be, dealing with, you know, crimes that are nonviolent, which involve securities, uh, things of that nature. Well, I did most of my time at highs and mediums. So, you know, I was at Long Park USP, and then I went to Sheridan, which was a medium, and then I went to Herlong, and there wasn't a whole lot of white collar guys there. The white collar guys that were there were guys who pissed off the judge, and basically the judge wanted them to learn a lesson, so they sent them to a facility that was a little bit rougher than average, you know. At a low, you know, it's pretty kicked back. I never made it down to a low. Medium, you have a mixture of guys, some of them doing life, and then you have guys who are, you know, maybe doing 20 years, 30 years. But anyways, the white collar guys I did run across were pretty cocky. You know, um, most of them are highly educated, you know, went to college, you know, have degrees, worked in finance, you know, or, uh, you know, the stock market, you know, they feel that they were above and beyond, um, you know, the scope of the law. And not to say, you know, we all, anybody who's hustling thought, you know, you were above the law. But these guys feel that they're, they, you know, the one I ran, runs I ran across felt like they, to some degree, were better than other individuals. And so what I mean by that is that, you know, they had a tendency to, if they talk to you, kind of talk down to you and think that they can run game. Like, I knew drug dealers that were balling, straight street motherfuckers, man. And these white collar guys would try to get them to get involved in investments on the street. And basically, it was a con game. The same shit they were doing before. Um, they would tell you that there is an opportunity to make a lot of money, but they need uh, 50 racks. Or, okay, if you don't have 50, $10,000 sent to this address and they can get you involved in some movie project or some real estate project or uh, some type of... Um, uh, maybe a uh, financial financial gig and it was always bullshit you know these guys they 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 you know they talk with a slick tongue and because they have lived a good life and have you know pictures or stories to tell you know we all fantasize about living a better life so a lot of times you'd want to you know they try to get you to buy into that and you'd want to believe it but it was bullshit these guys are just really good talkers you know you put a suit on a motherfucker and you know put him in a, a Ferrari or Aston Martin, you're not gonna really question too much what he's doing and put him in a nice house, you're thinking he's got his shit together. But he might be making less money than that motherfucking drug dealer that's in the projects hustling to make, you know what I'm saying, you know, rock for rock. And so, you know, like I said, these white collar guys, they just, you know, they're, they're a lot of them are arrogant and they just felt like they were better than the guy selling drugs because they, they weren't selling, you know, poison, they weren't pushing, things on the street well you're take they were taken from the fucking people who worked legitimate jobs who were hard-working people so they were really no better than the person selling drugs on the street and i'm not trying to judge criminal per criminal i've done everything you know what i'm saying and i'm not trying to say i'm no fucking angel but i don't project myself to be a fucking angel i don't try to act like i'm better than the next man i've done all i've done it all i've hustled in every aspect but the guys like i said who are white collar for example oh well if I go here, can I watch the Mets games? You know, I want to make sure they have Mets games at this facility, and I can't believe that they don't have this on commissary. Motherfucker, you're doing time, and you ain't running the TV. You watch what the motherfucking majority's watching. And, you know, if it's a lockdown, it's a lockdown, motherfucker. You ain't coming out your cell because you got to wash your ass. These are the rules of the trade, man, but a lot of these guys feel that they don't have to follow the rules because they've made so much money, you know, two, three hundred million, it gives them like almost a God complex. And uh, you know, they'll entertain you while you're in there. And I'm telling these guys on the street level, because they, you know, you wanna think they're gonna plug you when you get out. And I know it, cause I got homeboys that were at camps. You get out, these white collar motherfuckers are only fucking with you because you're in prison. You get out, they're not gonna, they, they basically gonna burn that ass. They're not gonna plug you, they're not gonna give you what they promised. And most of them are full of shit. So my experience with white collar guys hasn't been the best experience. And most of them I know are full of shit. They're running game. They're not going to hang out with no black or Mexican dude or no minority and try to really buddy-buddy with you on the street because their friends 
aren't really down with that program, who, aren't been, who haven't been locked up. So it's all a facade because they need the protection. But yeah, white collar guys, that's my experience. And um, I wouldn't say they're any better than a motherfucking drug dealer selling drugs on the street.